Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Tips Up. We are here in Breckenridge at a local backcountry tour. Um, the goal for this episode is really to show you guys what it's like to do sort of a typical tour um, around Summit County or around Colorado. So this tour is really popular for things like lunch laps, afternoon laps, really because um, the terrain is generally really safe. It's a northwest facing aspect, so the snow generally holds up pretty well in here. The This particular location, I'm not gonna tell you exactly where it is just because I'm not, I don't really wanna blow up spots around here, especially because this is sort of a local's favorite. This particular tour I have done probably more than any other tour uh, in my life. It was actually the spot where I learned to tour. It was the spot where I went on my first backcountry ski ever. So what we're hoping to show you today is just what it looks like to go on a quick tour like this. Generally really safe. You don't need a ton of advanced equipment. You don't need an ice axe. You don't really need any crampons or anything like that. It's really sort of a great introductory tour. So if you're looking to get into the sport, I would highly recommend you look for a spot like this because we have a relatively easy approach. The terrain is safe. It gets really, really well skied. Um, you'll see as we go up there, the snow in Colorado really is, is not great right now. We have not had a lot of snowfall for this time of year. The snowpack is frankly pretty sketchy. So we're choosing this location. We're choosing this episode today because it's a bit safer and because we know that for a lot of people who are interested in getting into backcountry skiing and ski touring, um, there's probably a lot of questions you have about what a typical tour looks like. So that's what today is gonna be. You know, unfortunately we don't have, we're not gonna be pal hunting. We're not gonna be doing anything crazy. Um, this is really just sort of a very introductory level tour and something that we do a lot of here um, amongst the Glade team and amongst sort of locals in Breckenridge is certainly a really nice activity to do after work or um, just to get some exercise. You'll see when we get up there skiing, it's not gonna be gnarly, it's not really gonna be anything crazy, um, but we'll try to give you sort of an inside look at what we were thinking about you know, as we were ascending and descending as well. Let's ski. So for today's tour, I more or less brought sort of the, the bare minimum that I bring when I, when I go touring. Um, I've got this 24 liter pack and inside the pack, I've got one extra shell layer, some water, a couple snacks and then my shovel and probe, of course. Um, the reason for that is that I am very familiar with this terrain. I've skied it a number of times. It's 1,500 vertical feet and about five miles around the trip. So in the spectrum of touring, that is not a lot. Um, so this should be a pretty quick day. I'd expect this to be up and down in probably two hours, maybe even less. In terms of sort of layering and what I'm wearing, it's not super chilly out today. Um, I'm sure you can see behind me, it's a little bit cloudy. So I'm wearing um, just base layers. I've got my snow pant bibs on, and then I have this Arturix Proton mid layer. And the thinking behind that is basically that I like to start fairly cold and then let my body warm up as I start to tour. So that's a pretty common mistake. I see a lot of new backcountry skiers make is that they start touring with like a giant puffy on or something and then they're sweating within 10 minutes. So that would be something I would definitely recommend is start cold. If you have risers on your bindings, a steeper slope like this would be a spot where you'd want to use that. So a lot of bindings uh, you can see sort of come with these elevators that flip down. Uh, mine have two levels, so there's one and then there's two. And then the thinking behind that is when you go to take a step with the riser on, it actually makes your foot parallel with that steep slope. So these do a lot and they go a long way for um, grip as well as sort of just ease and efficiency of movement on steeper slopes. So we are just coming out of the woods now. Um, it was probably about a mile-ish in the woods, pretty densely packed forest, but skin track, as you can see, is basically a road. You know, obviously, Depending on the tour you're doing, you're gonna run into a bunch of different skin tracks. You might be breaking trail yourself. You might be skinning along a road or a very heavily trapped area like this. It really just sort of depends on where you are and what you're doing. As you're coming up, the snow quality, as you can see here, I mean, it's the snow seems great. It's just gonna be a matter of, because we are skiing in early season conditions, what is underneath the snow? How deep is the snow? Are we gonna be hitting rocks and trees and sharks and all that? So from what, from what I can tell on the way up, as long as we can find some some uh, untracked areas, I think this is going to be a pretty fun tour. <laughs> oh, <laughs> save the camera! <laughs> I got to leave real quick. 
we have made it to the top. That skin was more or less basically exactly what we expected. The snow actually feels pretty good. I don't know if you can see on the video, but if I sort of whack it right here, it's really soft, really light. And in some spots, it was deep. So I think today's descent is gonna be a matter of just finding some deeper spots that uh, don't have any sort of rocks or stumps or anything like that, just because it's still early season. So I do expect there to be some debris in the way. This slope right here is Northwest Aspect and under 30 degrees. Let me, I've skied a number of times before. As you can see, it's been hit pretty hard by people already. So that is to be expected at a place like this. It's a really popular zone. Again, it's just not really a spot you go unless you're looking for sort of a quick exercise to get outside or in and out type of ski. We're gonna start the transition process. Something that's important that I do first thing every time I transition is I flip my bindings straight into ski mode. That flips the breakdown. That way, if you do drop your ski, it's not gonna go flying down the hill. You don't have to go chase after it. In terms of skins, there's a bunch of ways to take your skins off and store them. Uh, something I like to do is go halfway here. I'll grab the skin at the halfway point, go another quarter, and then flip it onto itself. And what that does is make sure that the glue is on the glue, so that when you put it in your jacket or in your pack, um, it's gonna be ready to go um, next time you wanna ski with it or next time you wanna dry it out. So I usually stick my skins just straight back in my pack, unless I'm doing a second lap, in which case I'll put it actually in my jacket because it keeps the skin warm, which makes it easier to rip the glue off the second time. Whew. It's windy up here. Today, I chose my uh, Black Diamond Route 105s with the cane pin binding. And the reason I chose these skis is because like many backcountry skiers, if you ski long enough, your bases get totally chopped up. And today is still very early season conditions. I'm sure I'm gonna be hitting some rocks and stumps and shit like that. So I'm taking these skis out because I'm not too scared if they get beat up just because they are, I guess what you would call a rock ski for me now. I've got the cane pin binding on these. I don't love this binding. I don't necessarily recommend it. I actually have the shift bindings on my other touring setup. I've had some mishaps with this binding. Um, there's been a few instances where I've been clipped in and the binding has just completely popped off my ski. I think we actually have a clip of it that we could probably insert here, but you know, it's just, you want to have full trust in your bindings and frankly, I don't fully trust these, but they're pretty popular. They get the job done for an easy skin like this. So I fully transitioned. I got my skins in my pack. My skis are ready to go. I've got my beacon on and beeping. We did a beacon test at the beginning of the skin. So I think now it's really just about us trying to find the best snow and have the best descent possible. that I think based on conditions and based on what we're expecting that was a perfectly great Sunday afternoon skin a little bit of swacking a little bit of power turns um, a lot of fun it's great to get outside so I hope this was interesting to you guys uh, we have a lot more content coming with some hopefully more interesting tours you know this was by no means a life-changing tour or anything like that but I hope it serves as a good intro for people who are new to the sport to get a better idea of or what it's like to get outside and go ski touring. So stay tuned for future episodes and uh, see you next time.